Melanie Marnich, uh, I know you read The Galleys for Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty, and you've said that you were hooked within the first 10 pages. So what was it about the book that spoke to you? I think it's the life in Leanne, Leanne's writing. Um, it just immediately leapt into the world, leapt into the characters, leapt into their their quirks like I felt like I knew them immediately and it was so funny the book was simultaneously dire and funny which I was like "Ooh, this is exactly my cup of tea <laughs> something bad happened and I'm laughing you know that that was um really delightful and I also for me like Leon did this incredible sleight of hand where it was funny it was harrowing and she delivered these incredibly potent themes about love, marriage, commitment, forgiveness. And I was like, oh, this is fascinating for the, for the roller coaster ride that it is. It's always delivering these deep, deep, powerful themes and, and kind of with the gloves off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how did you go about adapting the book or turning the book into a, a TV show? And, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could go about it. And I love how you structured the show seven episodes and each episode has a POV with the Delaney's. Yeah. So how, how did you go about that? How did you land on that format? It's, I would love to say I, I knew it from the beginning and it was easy. It was, <laughs> um, it was, you know, I, I thought at first it would be easy. And you know, the, the great thing about the book is it is literally an embarrassment of riches. It, there was so much happening. And so I was like, okay, this is going to be no problem. There's so much going on. Well, sometimes that is the right. Like, how do you contain all that? How do you, how do you rein that in? So it was sort of in steps of realization. I think um, originally, I think I had originally envisioned it eight episodes. And then when it dawned on me, I was like, oh, now we have the Delaney. Like, there's a version where we could do, you know, this, this kind of very compartmentalized thing, eliminate the eight, get it down to seven. And then you know exactly what the machine is. You know, it was like suddenly when I figured out that sort of conceit or structural conceit, narrative conceit, I was like, okay, now I know what the machine is. And it's really, really precise. And it's, it's, it, it's as muscular as the book. You know, that book has that uh, page turner energy. The question was how to bring that same energy to the show and that, that structure and limiting the number of episodes. So it was always sort of contents under pressure was really key. Um, and then in the writer's room, like the, the, in the book, and then, you know, hopefully we translate this for the show, the characters have such rich backstories, but of course in TV, it's only the here and now in a sense, you know, it's only what you can dramatize. So in the writer's room, we had each character had a board with their backstory so that we're always cognizant of what they were, what each character was walking into a scene with, you know, so it kind of helped give everything a lot of gas um, and then it was really, we would break episodes, we would break scenes and somebody would be like, okay, this works great. This is, this seems like it's fine. It seems like it's great, but I would look at it and go, okay, now what's the Apple's version? And it was always bringing a little bit of weirdness to it or a little like something unexpected, you know, that, that there was something I wanted to create that was both very propulsive but also that wasn't enough. It also had to be surprising because I think that is, is what the book is. So it was a lot. I mean, and it was like, like iterations of things. It was quite tireless. Mm -hmm. I, I do love like, because it has a very specific tone and I don't even know like how to describe it. Maybe, maybe it's just apples, like you said, but it's like kind of light on its feet at the yeah. same time being uh, this mystery, um, ostensibly a murder mystery, and also a character study with these individual episodes, too. Yeah. And I love that it kind of worked out that, you know, it's it's a family of six, and then you get the seven episodes, like the first episode is the called the Delaney's, and you, it's like setting up everything, and they each get their own episode. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna, I just want to comment on something you just said, which I, I thank you, I want to thank you for this. You said it's light on its feet. That is very much, you just sort of nailed something that was really important to us. And I think, you know, I would look at the boards or look at scripts or whatever, and we'd sit in the writer's room and I'd say, okay, this scene, this act seems to end on someone landing on two feet. How do we hop out on one? Like how, how, like, 
how do you keep that? And then again, in editorial, sometimes there was much more written and it was like, what if we just gave it a haircut, you know, and, and you ended on a question versus the answer. And I hope, I think that's what kind of created that, that fleetness, mm -hmm. um, you know. So yeah. And there's, there's humor in it too, but it's not like, you know, you're not doing like jokes and setups and punchlines, but there, I think you need, you really need to watch it to appreciate the humor because a lot of it's like contextual. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that lends to the, the watchability of it too. Thank, thank you for thank. Did my mom call you and tell you what to say? Because yeah, this is yeah, she incredible. she split into my DMs earlier. So <laughs> there you go. Um, no, thank you for that. It that was a big conversation. The kind of humor because the book is very funny, you know. The, and and it's like how to how to keep that spirit, but it's also like you can't disrespect or undercut the fact that something very potentially horrifying has happened, which is this woman has gone missing. So that to me meant no jokes, no jokes. You cannot crack a joke when a woman, when you're also worried about a woman um, possibly not being alive. Um, it's quite very, very serious. Um, but what is real is that those kids drive each other nuts. And what is real is without their mom, they drive each other even more nuts. And that is funny. The way- The, the car scene when they yes. come into the lawyer's office. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those, I mean, those actors, like we, I would say with the casting is like, we're not going to have punchlines. We're not going to have joke jokes. So these characters have to carry it in their bones. And you look at Jake Lacey, you know, Alison Brie, funny. They're just funny. Um, you know, they know how mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk about uh, this monologue that Joy has in the finale when she's explaining to Savannah why she left uh, <laughs> her family. And it's, Basically that, you know, she felt invisible and unappreciated because she's made all these sacrifices and there's no thank you. And that really hits at the 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 thesis of the show, really, that there's all different types of love and you can love your family, but not like them all the time. Sometimes you hate them and how it just mutates. And I kind of love that the, their, the family profession is tennis because I, I love tennis, but also like in tennis, love means zero. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But but how, what was it like watch, uh, writing that monologue for uh, Annette Benning to s deliver? Well, I mean, first of all, like writing anything for Annette Benning is a dream. Code. <laughs> you know, it's like I would watch her read a menu. Uh, that woman is incredible. So that um, monologue came about post strike. So I'd had time away from it. It came about as part of a rewrite. Um I'm trying, I can't remember what it was before. I think there was a version of the monologue. Um, but I think I rewrote it or wrote it anew. I, I, I mean, I can't even remember. It all sort of blends together in terms of drafts. Um, but having learned so much prior to the strikes, but what made these characters tick, what they felt like, how potent their performances were, the actors' performances, um, really informed that. It really informed that and having seen the relationship with Joy and Stan during production sort of grow and become more and more lived in. Um, getting to know Annette and her talking, you know, talking to her about the character and what she would like to see in it. Um, it was it was really fun to write. It, it felt quite satisfying. And also that she could say those things and yet we will find out under it all is great love. And as you pointed out, these things aren't mutually exclusive. You can say, I think we're broken, but that doesn't mean you also don't still love this person or I've had it with my children. It doesn't mean you don't love them, you know, but you have had it. Um, and I just, you know, as a woman who's been a caretaker and, and done certain things uh, in life and there's a certain accretion of sometimes exhaustion, um, you know, tapping into that and, and, you know, just kind of letting it go. And, um, it was really fun to write and knowing that she would um, deliver it virtuosically and virtuosic. Is that the right word? Virtuosically. Um, and she also like, we went over it and she's like, you know, she had suggestions for little trims or things. And she's like, that's in there. That's already in there. And it was so wonderful to go through it. And because she had lived in joy so thoroughly, like do some nips and tucks and make it even more powerful was really a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
and I think it's it's so relatable too for everyone you know not you don't need to be in a family or married you know with kids or anything like this could just have had it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's so interesting because it, it sounds like you, you know you know obviously unfortunately we had to go through the strikes but it, it sounds like that was all, like a blessing in the skies almost that you could revisit it afterwards and make this huge change there's yeah I mean with it's, it's the humbling thing with writing always isn't it you think yeah you, you go back you need some distance from it <laughs> like what was I thinking um <laughs> I thought that worked um yeah yeah and it was also the gift of those performers you know like I said having been with them and watching them inhabit and and these characters and and making them their own and just blooming watching them bloom um, informed it very much and our, our conversations on set and our conversations over pizza, you know, whatever it may be, uh, goes into all of that. Mm -hmm. Were there any other changes when you came back post-strike that you made, uh, similar to that or like any minor things? <laughs> yeah. Um, the big one, six, I made changes to, again, it was like kind of just having fresh eyes, you know? having fresh eyes. And I would say though, the sort of the big one was the end of 107. Uh, 107 had ended very differently. It kind of went on and kind of went on and on. It was, it covered more time. Uh, <laughs> and after, after she returns. Yeah. Yeah. It was like them processing what had happened and which was very interesting. That was, it was more true to the book that way. Um, and it was like, this is what happened. What is she going to do? Is she going to stay? Is she going to go? How is dad going to be? Um, and it was really lovely and interesting, but when I went back after the strikes and again, like having spent four months with those actors and those characters prior to the strikes and having a sense of their, their brilliance, but their sort of emotional velocity and, and muscularity, you know, taking that and going, okay, I'm going to reread these now. And I was like, oh, there's no way these kids would be like, ma, you think about it. Let us know we'll be waiting no like she's gonna walk in the door and they're gonna say what were you thinking we thought you were dead and so that was um the big one to just like put joy's feet to the fire immediately because that's who those kids are and that you know joy is no weak link she lets them have it right back and that felt much more true ultimately mm -hmm. sure uh, I mean, obviously, with any book to screen adaptation, there's some changes from the books. Uh, so how did you go about, you know, deciding what to change from in the adaption from, you know, page to screen? Or, yeah. And like adding certain things, you know, like Troy having an affair at work, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really important. I mean, the book is an embarrassment of riches. There's just I, I, I saved my uh, the galleys because of all the post-it notes and notes in it. It's just like. It looks insane because there's so much in there and so great. But the question for the adaptation is how do we dramatize it? These incredible internal changes or the incredible uh, memories or backstories, all great. But how does that live on screen in the present moment as action, as drama, as conflict, as change? You know, so it was really about taking that, the riches from the book, finding out what really would provide the most sort of propulsive, muscular and meaningful structure you know, which is hard. Like there's no shortcuts. You just got to get in there and muck around and then figure out how to ground it all in character. So it was like the changes I made were really about dramatizing, I think the the themes, <laughs> like, I, like figure out how to dramatize these incredible issues and in Joy's case, the resentments or pain um, so I think different from the book, Joy is the one who says, I did it. I told Harry's dad to fire you, like making it a choice for that character versus something that happens to her is different. Having mm -hmm. the kids, like I said, hold her feet to the fire at the end is very different. Um, Brooke's character is very different. It was often about trying to just find organic conflict that stemmed from the characters that would move our story forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, dramaturgy 101 but difficult mm -hmm. um I know you uh envisioned Annette in the role so what was it about uh you know Joy that made you think Annette Benning I mean I think she she's incredible in the part and then what was it like talking to her and, and pitching her the show 
It's an out of body experience. I mean, honest to God, I did it from this chair in my office, and I remember it being like calm. We were she was going to call me at a certain time, like two o'clock on a on a Tuesday, and I was like, okay. And the phone rang, and I was like, hello. And she's like, hello, Melanie. This is the net Benning. And I kind of lost my mind. <laughs> and I remember sitting here and like literally turning and looking out at the trees going, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. Um, I mean, cause she's a stunning artist, just a stunning artist. And like, and so grounded and so generous and so intelligent and so disciplined. I mean, this is amazing. And I think, you know, for me, joy had to have a power and authenticity, a vulnerability an integrity and also a relatability, you know? I mean, Annette's a huge star, but she is also able to convey that she is one of us, which is another of her incredible gifts. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just pictured her from the get. Um, and then when we talked, we had one conversation, I think, um, I believe she talked briefly to David Heyman, the other producer, and then she called me and we had probably an hour long conversation where she asked terrific questions. Um, and I talked about how I saw the show and how I saw Joy's journey um, and how I understood the story to matter, you know, and why it mattered. And um, she gets so, she inhabits a character in a way that is, is I found quite profound. So when she was asking questions, they were almost like, questions from within joy you know like like why would she do this why did I go oh good question you know like it's one thing to be a writer and moving parts around and then the suddenly that you're talking to the person who's contemplating putting on the joy suit every day and what what does that bring about um so it was a great conversation for which I was very nervous <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, lastly, I, I love that uh, you, you've been pretty clear about how you don't want to do a second season. We've seen a lot of limited series just return for, you know, a, a second season or a third season. Um, but you you love the, the note that the show ended on for these characters. Um, so what was this something you knew right away from the start that you you just wanted this to be, you know, one and done and you, you don't need to revisit these characters again? Um, oh, I would say... It ain't my decision to say, I, 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 the network and the studio, you know, obviously would weigh in. Um, I, I think we all felt, if I can speak for them, maybe I don't know what they would say right now, but like that story happened because Savannah showed up at a very specific point in time mm -hmm. and it told itself, the story told itself in full, you know, um, this, this isn't a family of murderers. It's not a family of, you know. People are going to go out on criminal. They're not going to go rob banks. You know, they're like, they're, they're, the caper happened. The caper happened and it healed them. You know, it, it the family. It's healing for, for both parties. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Savannah, she forgives joy and she takes off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel that it was a thing that happened to them at a certain point in time because of that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, and that it was kind of alchemical, you know, it, 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 it ignited and took them somewhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel the story was was told in full for them, but yeah. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> never. Never say never. Never say never. I think the thing we say when we're exhausted after production is one thing. Like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it 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 is it feels like quite a fulsome story. Yeah, it, it can live like this. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely can. It mm -hmm. absolutely can. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, Melanie, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. Have Thank a great day. Thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it.